Hi guys and welcome to another IBM ODM technical tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go through one of the most basic stories that we can uh, we can achieve and it will illustrate what it takes and how quickly it, uh, it can be achieved the ability to build out a simple rule. So in this story we imagine that we are business owners and we run a shop, a store, an enterprise, a corporation and in our business we sell widgets and we sell widgets of red, green and blue. So we sell all kinds of different widgets and when an order comes in, an order comes in and it defines uh, uh, what uh, type of widget, whether it's red, green or blue, the customer wants to buy and we describe the quantity of which and the, the order contains the quantity that the customer wants to purchase. Now in our enterprise we maintain a stock of widgets and from time to time we realize we may be overstocked on a certain type and we need to clear some of those uh, stock items. So what we want to do is incentivize the customer to buy more of a particular type. So we offer discounts if they buy widgets of a particular color and a particular quantity. And as business owners we then want to uh, uh, implement or make operational a rule like the following. If a customer, customer orders five or more red widgets, we'll give them a 10% discount. That's an example of a decision that we need to make as business owners on how to change our stock. Now, this is not a rule that will be in uh, effect forever and ever. This is a short-term rule. It's something that may change from day to day, week to week, month to month. It's something that we want to change or be able to change relatively frequently. And as such, we don't want to imbue our applications with hard-coded uh, logic that embeds this kind of rule in the application code. As such, we want to be able to externalize it and allow business users to make those changes themselves. And this is where ODM, IBM's Operational Decision Manager, comes into the story. So what we're going to uh, do now is demonstrate what it would take to build a simple, simple rule like this from an IT perspective and uh, implement that in ODM. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we start with the notion that uh, somewhere along the line, I'm going to have a, a representation of an incoming order. And here I'm describing that in Java. This is where we start, for example. Uh, an order might be received by our web server, and the web server would then build a sale object, and the sale object contains two properties, the quantity and the widget type. So here's a simple Java class with properties and getters and setters. Now, we don't have to use Java here, we could use XML we could use COBOL, we could use JSON, we could use other languages, the list goes on and on and on. But for this simple story, I'm going to imagine that the incoming data is a piece of Java code. So if we look again at our story here, the incoming data is a sale representation with a type and a quantity, and the output is going to be a numeric, which is the discount we want to offer. So with this Java class in place, let's go ahead and use ins uh, uh, Rule Designer to build out a rule. So I select New, Rule Project, Main Rule Project, Next, and I'm going to call this POC1, Proof of Concept 1, and I'm going to hit the Finish button. And that has created for us an ODM project. Now, when we create an ODM project, we're given a map down here, which are the activities that we want to perform in order to build out the completion of our project. So the first thing I'm going to do now, after having created the project, is import the ZOM. X-O-M. What a strange word. The ZOM is the executable object model. It is the mechanical representation of data that is going to come into our rule system. So I click on the import ZOM button. It asks me, what do you want to import from? I'm going to import from a piece of Java code. Um, it asks which project uh, in your environment uh, do, contains that code. And we've selected our POC1 ZOM. And we hit the OK button. Now we create something called a business object model. The business object model is the ODM logical representation of this data. 
For here, we've got nice mechanical data. This is the data which is moving around inside your application programs. When we want to build rules, we don't want to express our rules in terms of this uh, mechanical uh, uh, GORP. Instead, we want to refer to it in terms of a high-level business model. And I can take my mechanical model and from that, create my BOM. So I'm going to create my BOM from the ZOM. I'm going to select my ZOM. I'm going to select which classes in my ZOM, hit the finish button, and what that has done is that has created me a business object model. So that has phrases in it like quantity and widget type and sale, and this then allows me to refer to these attributes when I write my business rules. Now having created my BOM, I now create an operation. So the operation might be, for example, calculate discount. This is what uh, the operation is going to appear to be from the client caller application. So this is, think of it like a function interface. So I'm going to uh, call it calculate discount, hit the finish button, and now I've created my blank operation. Now at this point, the operation only has a name. It has no input parameters nor output parameters. So now I go and start specifying the details of that operation. And I select the operation I'm going to provide the details on. And I create a set of variables. So I'm going to create this called vars. And these are the variables which are going to be either inputs or outputs or both to my operations. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it sale. Its data type is going to be the sale data type, which came from the ZOM. And I'm going to call this uh, uh, in my code, it, uh, uh, not in my code, in my verbalization in the English language, it's going to be called sale. I'm going to add another variable. I'm going to call this one discount. Yep, I spelled that right. And it's going to be a double, a floating point number. And I'm going to call this one discount. And we're going to give it an initial value of zero, saying that the initial discount is going to be zero. So I've now defined the variables which are going to be available to my rules environment. I now bind my uh, variables to the, uh, uh, to the operation. So I've got an operation. The operation is called calculate discount. It's going to take as input a sale, and it's going to return as output a discount. Easy as that. Save that. Now I can go and build my rule. So we'll call this uh, rule number one. Simple name, rule number one. And now I want to describe the rule that I want to execute. So if we look again at uh, the English language of what I want to achieve, a business person might say if a customer orders five or more red widgets, we will give them a 10% discount. This is it in pure English, in, in our mental form. This is the goal we want to achieve. So here, in my business rules editor, I can literally start typing out if and it gives me entry assist. The quantity of the sale is at least, uh, I forgot, what did I say I wanted it to be? I wanted it to be five or more. If the quantity of the sale is at least five and the type, uh, widget type of the sale is red, then set discount to 0.1 or 10%. And that's it. That's me having expressed that business rule to ODM. And this is the language that we use to offer business rules in the ODM product. Hit Control Shift F to reformat it so it looks a little prettier. And there we have it. This is what it looks like from a business rules offering perspective. Okay, so having written our rule, let's go ahead and start to get ready to, de to, uh, to test it. So I want to deploy this to my rule execution server. That's the ODM runtime for executing rules. I create myself what's called a deployment configuration. This specifies uh, how I'm going to deploy it. I only need to do this once per project. So uh, I specify which operations I want to include 
in this deployment. I'm going to include my calculate discount. Done that. I'm going to specify my target servers. Where on my network uh, am I going? Are my target servers? I'm going to specify one target server. I'm going to save that. And now I click on the deploy the rule application. It takes me through a wizard. Spe uh, allows me to validate that I'm deploying to the right machines. Allows me to de evaluate what version I'm going to deploy. Hit the finish button. And that's it, literally as quick as that. We have now deployed this rule that I've just built live in front of you out to a rule execution server. So if I now bring up my browser, this is my administrative console, I can refresh this and we see that the rule uh, for calculating discount is now being deployed. The date and time is now and uh, we're ready to test it. So I can click on my rule and I can retrieve the uh, uh, the uh, uh, interface in order to call it from a client perspective. I'm going to demonstrate calling it as a REST client. I'm going to hit the test button and now it's asking us for the input data to the decision. So let's do a quantity of three blue widgets. Remember it was five and red widgets so let's see what happens see what the discount is for three blue widgets execute the request and we get a discount of zero let's see three red widgets execute the request we get a discount of zero let's do five red widgets we get a discount of 10 percent let's do 10 red widgets execute it again we get a discount of 10 percent well, let's say we've now been selling our widgets for a while and we've burned down some of the red widgets and now we say, well, we'll give them a discount if it's 20 or more, 20 or more. So if I say 10, uh, we no longer want a discount of 10%, we want a discount of zero. So let's go in and change our rule. We go in, change our rule. If the sale is at least uh, 20 widgets, save and then redeploy my solution. Redeploy, redeploy, it's telling us it's going to deploy a new version of my rule, version 1.1. Deploy, click, done. Let's go back to my environment here and uh, refresh. We now find that we have two versions of the rule, a 1.0 and a 1.1. Let's go to the 1.1 version. Let's go and test it again. Uh, let's say we're going to call it in JSON. Now if I say I wish to buy five, red widgets, execute the request, a discount of zero. Great, that's what we want. 15 red widgets, execute the request, a discount of zero. 20 red widgets, execute the request, a discount of 10%. And that's it. That's what it looks like to build in 10 minutes flat a BRMS rule in the ODM environment. From now, we can uh, include uh, client calls to invoke the rule. And you've seen here what it looks like to make changes to the rule from an IT perspective and redeploy it. It really can't be much easier than that. I hope you found this presentation interesting, and I look forward to making more in the future. Thanks now, and bye-bye.